Hello, everyone, and welcome into the Mad Science Lab podcast. I am Aaron St. Dennis. You can find me on Twitter at FF Mad Scientist. I am joined today by Scott Milne, and you can find him at Scott Milne TSF. Did I pronounce that right, Milne? That, that is, and it's a very rare thing to pronounce right, which is shocking. No, you know what's but, even more shocking? I'm the guy who does so many of these. I screw up my own name half the time. So <laughs> the fact that I got your name correct is it's a good sign. We're off to a solid start. But Beautiful. Love it. As I said, thank you for joining the Mad Science Lab podcast. We are brought to you by a combination of the Fantasy Football Universe and our new network, the Fantasy Football Advice Network. <laughs> Today, we have another edition of Risers and Fallers, but before we get into that, how's it going, Scott? Thanks for joining me. Uh, it's going great. You know, like you said before, we're in the offseason now, um, right before the NFL draft, the NFL free agency, so this is some of the best time to start getting content out for the next season. All right. Uh, before we get ahead of ourselves, do you want to take a second here, tell everyone what you do, where they can find you, you know, just a little about, a little bit sure. about yourself. Yeah, my name is Scott Milne. Um, you can find me, um, I work for Top Shelf Fantasy, just a small platform that a few of my friends started a couple years ago. Um, you can find us at topshelffantasy.com. That's where our content is. Of course, we are on Twitter, slash X at Instagram, uh, at Top Shelf FNTSY, and also anywhere you can find podcasts. Um, search at Top Shelf Fantasy, Spotify, My Heart Radio, anything like that. Perfect. I always like to let everyone introduce themselves because there are, it seems like there are so many podcasts that then I'm like, Oh, I know everyone. And I know this. And it's just, there's so many places everyone works or, and people don't always update their bio. I'll be like, this is Scott from blah, blah, blah. And he's like, you'll be like, Oh no, no, I haven't worked there in like a year. I'm here now. But <laughs> I'm always like, you do you, man, you tell us where to find you. So, yep. well, thank you for joining me. Let's get right into it. We're going to start with your riser. The league winner of the year. Well, I guess both of them were on the Rams, but this one is the running back, Kyron Williams. Uh, he is in his second season. First one, he was uh, what, RB, RB88, not wide receiver. And last year, he was running back seven. Damn. 228 attempts, 1,144 rushing yards, 12 rushing touchdowns, 32 receptions for 206 yards and three touchdowns. We'll take a look at the keep trade cut value just so we know how the general public values him. It is 26th overall and as RB6. Over on Fantasy Pros, where the experts have him, they also have him as RB7, so similar range here, and 18th overall. So it seems like he is going somewhere in the se late second round as a mid to low end RB1. Where do you have him? Where do you think he goes? You know, what are your general thoughts here on Kyron Williams? Yeah, so I was looking at the Fantasy Pros rankings before this and i did see the rb7 ranking for ecr i have him around rb5 i know it's not a huge jump but i feel like when you're up in yeah, that yeah. tier that you know rb7 rb5 oh, yeah. is massive um so phase pros has him around a tier two i guess you can say you have you have your tier one of you know Bijan, hall gibbs um yeah tier one is Bijan, hall gibbs mccaffrey you're right he's in this tier two with Taylor, ETN, Williams, and HN. Yes. And I do think, even if he goes up to RB5, maybe tie with JT, I think you can extend the tier one to even JT and Kyron. I'd put, put him over ETN at this point, just based off last season. Um, like you said, he was RB7 overall. He only played in 12 games. Um, points per game is, you know, RB2, which is great. But again, he did miss those games, so I guess that's concerning. Go back to his rookie year. You said RB88, pretty much a lost season. But he Hurt didn't play, yeah, yeah. Half the year, so more than yeah. half the year. So, um, I mean, the biggest reason he's a riser is from year one to year two, um, RB88 to RB7. And just in last summer, it was kind of hard because, you know, everyone thought K makers was going to be the guy, even though we knew what he could do, which is nothing, or, you know, he could get 20 carries a game. And I think like people weren't even talking about, you know, just, just handcuff acres, just in case it, it could go South. And no one really brought that, that up until, you know, week one when they saw Kyron get some work. So um, 
I think that's the biggest reason I have as a riser. I know, you know, he may have technically peaked at RB2 points per game this year. But, I mean, your question with who is the biggest riser, you know, I kind of view that as a one-and-a-half year, yes. two-year span and, you know, massive riser. It's funny because some people did think to handcuff Cam Akers. The problem is they handcuffed him with either Zach Evans or Daryl Henderson. It didn't work out, so – it's yep. interesting because I'm not going to lie. Kyron was one. I, I loved him as I was doing the rookie scouting that year, his draft class. I was out after the combine. He was one where he came in small. He came in, was it old? Yeah, he came in. Well, I guess he wasn't old, but he came in small and slow. And I was just out. I lost all faith in him whatsoever. So if you had gone back to me last year, like I said, I when I handcuffed my shares of Cam Akers, which were very few, I took Zach Evans. I thought I wasn't high on Zach Evans. I just thought I was like, ah, I don't think Kyron Williams is going to be a thing. So for this to happen, I, I'm going to say I got this one wrong too. So um, yeah, we'll take a look at the guys in his range. I think, like you said, it seems like this is kind of an in-between tier, tier two. I think you're right. So Bijan Hall, Gibbs and McCaffrey are tier one. I would include JT, Kyron and tier one. And then I would bump ETN and HN down to tier three. Um, so I'm going to assume, as far as Williams goes, you're not taking him over Taylor, McCaffrey, Gibbs, Hall, Robinson. Are you taking him over any of those top five? As much as I want to say that, I'm probably not going to. No, oh, yeah, that's what um, I thought. I, I feel yeah. the same way. Like I, I could see maybe if you're a long term, like if you're a rebuilding team, I think you take him over CMC. But the others are just as young as he is. So CMC is the only one I would take in Dy or him over in Dynasty just for the youth. Right. Yep. I, yeah. And as I think far he's as... Yeah, go ahead. Go ahead, sorry. Yeah, you know, uh, going back to his age, I think, yeah, he's turns 24 before yeah. the next season starts. So Yeah. Yeah, yeah so uh, I guess it's a little older for an RB to come in. Uh, and as far as the guys who would be below him, I think I have him firmly on top of all of them. ETN would be the closest. Same with A-Chan. They're both kind of in the, the tweener tier with him where I – I like both of them, but I think I prefer Kyron. I want him for sure over Barkley. Walker, I think, could be in this tier of the four of them. I want him over White. I want him over Cook, Pacheco, Jacobs. Then we're not even close. So mm -hmm. um, I, is there anyone in that group of ETN, Achan, Barkley, Walker, White, Cook? I know it's a lot of names. Was there anyone that jumped out where you thought you would take them over Kyron? Um, I don't think so. I, ETN, HN, Barkley, Walker, White, Cook? Nothing. No, I, I would take Kyron over that. And and it's, I mean, Barkley's hard because you, you, want, you want him. You know what he can do. He's a free agent. Um, there's He's uncertainty old. in that. You know, there's, you didn't even list like Josh Jacobs or Derek Henry. Yeah, then, they're, know, that's, I, that's they were further too. down, yeah. Right, but you know, you have Ken Walker, you still have Charbonnet there new coaching staff, like there's so much uncertainty there. So um, that's why I think Kyron is just, it's just safer. Yeah. I think I'm, I'm in line here with you. I find the top five, I'm not going to move him over unless I'm a rebuilder, then McCaffrey, different story. And yeah. the ones below him, while I like them, I don't think I'm taking ETN, HN, Barkley, Walker, White, Cook, any of those guys over him. So he seems like when I do my first round of rankings, which I don't do till after the draft, I hate it's a waste of time right now. Yeah, so get it, it's all the whole thing. I think he right now, if I had to do a ranking right now, he is firmly entrenched for me as RB6. I think it's just solid. I don't like him as much as the guys above him. I like him considerably more than the guys below him. And I think he's almost in his own tier there, maybe a tier with ETN, but right there, I think he's firmly six for me right now. Huh? And what is uh so he's yeah, six and seven on fantasy pro, so that's right about where it is. I, I don't mind that. Um, we will head over now to your faller. No surprise here. Pittsburgh running back Najee Harris. He's played three seasons. Not a good trend. Was RB3 as a rookie, then 14 and 23 last year. Still at 1,035 rushing yards on 255 attempts, eight rushing touchdowns, 29 receptions for 170 yards, and zero passing touch or receiving touchdowns. Sorry. <clears throat> on keep trade cut, he is going 110th overall as RB26. On Fantasy Pros, it is 75th overall as RB24. 
Uh, where do you view Harris here? Where do you have him right now? And how much further down do you think he goes? Yeah, so I had him, not specific rank, but I would put him around the RB30 yep. um, in my end. And it could go down even further than that. I mean, you have okay, well, Jill. Yeah, well, here's one. That's what we'll do. He's at 24, and yeah. we'll just we'll see how far down we can go. So uh, would you take – okay, Najee Harris or Brian Robinson? Brian Robinson. Harris or Henry? See, that's where it gets interesting, I think. Yeah. The, that group it, it, is – do you want the youth? They're like Because Henry, Eckler, Aaron Jones, Chubb, Connor, I think they're all better running backs than him, but it becomes situational here because if you want to win this year, I'm taking the aging guys. I don't give a damn. Mm -hmm. But if, if like if you're in a rebuild, I think you take Najee by default. So he could, depending on situation, I could see him going all the way down to like 32. Like I don't know about you, I'm the Roshan guy, but we have Roshan here and Zach Charbonnet, even Jalen Warren. Do you like any of those three over Najee? I like all three over Najee. Yes, I do, and those were the the guys I saw when I did go through the um, list because you named all the older guys, and yeah, yeah, it's situational. If you're gonna win now, sure, take Aaron Jones, take Derek Henry, take Chubb, um, but yeah, I mean, Roshan was a guy you drafted high second round last year, early first, depending what time you drafted. Yeah, Jalen Warren's a big reason why I have Najee as a follower. Absolutely, yeah. And there's there's just so many young guys with more upside, I think. With Najee, I think you kind of know what you have. Even like, okay, so the one above him, there's a ton of aging backs around him. So mm -hmm. I'm going to exclude Mixon, Henry, Eckler, Jones, and Chubb, because those are all, like I said, it's build and team dependent. But two above him, we have Ty J Spears and David Montgomery. I'm taking both of those hands down. You give me David Montgomery, I'm running. Tajay Spears, I think, was better than Najee, and that's with Derrick Henry there. Derrick Henry gone. Like, are you you're taking Montgomery and Spears pretty easily over Najee, I would assume? Absolutely. I mean, yeah. you saw what Monty did with Gibbs. Like, sure, Gibbs could be the better guy there, but two RB ones there, and at the worst, he's probably an RB two. And right, Spears is probably starts the year as the heavy favorite to lead the team in attempt so i think both those guys are, are trending up while harris is trending down yeah that just it seems absolutely free there like it, the only way in this range here from 20 all the way down to 35 the only situation where i'm taking any of these guys over him is if i'm in a rebuilding team and i don't want mix in i don't want the old guys but if i'm in a rebuilding team i don't want any running back so I don't have, I just, I don't want Najee. So give me all, give me Montgomery Spears, uh, Brian Robinson, Jalen Warren, Charbonnet, Roshan, even Ken J. Miller. I, I'd rather any of them. And in a, a rebuilding team, I'm just not going to have any of these aging guys or Harris on the team. So it makes no, no sense here. I'm even looking down. Like I, I just, I don't really like, I, I like everyone in the range from 17 all the way to like, I think I'd rather take a shot on Zamir White. Khalil Herbert. Maybe yeah. Cuba Hubbard's you, the guy where I'm not taking him, but you you can go down and down. Like and even Hubbard's like you can wait and get Hubbard away later, then you will get Harris. So, you know, you can wait on a guy. He's just in his tough range because you said it's aging guys or it's younger guys with upside. Yeah. Then there's well, Harris. Okay, so this might just be me, and you may call me crazy here. We'll see what you think. So Harris is going as 24. I'll take Chase Brown at RB40 over him at 23. I get a so 20 or 17 picks. I'm going to see what that is overall. Just give me one sec. I got a transition yeah, over here. Najee, I don't even know where that is. What did I say? Najee was 24. So yeah. RB24, bear with me. That puts him as 75 overall, 75th overall. And I'm going to go all the way down here to running back 40. Where the hell is Chase Brown? Going, going, scrolling, scrolling. So we go from 74 all the way down to 132. So I can get Chase Brown 62 picks later. Yes, please. Thank yeah, you. All and you have to wait another year for him to even get more work. I'm fine with that. Yeah, absolutely. All day long. Like, I, I, I don't think it's even close. I just, yeah. I look at this range of running backs and even, like I said, regardless of situation, I don't see any circumstance 
where Najee Harris is the guy I'm leaving with my, my draft with. Because if I'm going to win now, I'll take all the aging guys over him. And if I'm not, I, I'm still, there's a handful of guys I'd rather take. Like, aside from if I have to decide between him and I said maybe Chuba, but even Chuba, I'm, I'm taking Jerome Ford, Kendra Miller, like Kevin Singleton. Like, how far do I? AJ Dillon. Okay. I think I'd take him over AJ Dillon, maybe Damian Same. Pierce. But like, so we're down to RB44 before I say, eh, maybe I'll take Najee over them. That's truly scary. Yeah, he just one of those guys that you just let someone else make the pick, and Absolutely. if you're wrong, you're wrong. If you're not, good. Like it's fine. You, you can kind of live with it. Uh, it was the 2022 season startup. He went in my dynasty startup as the 108. My how he has fallen. I mean, right, rightfully so though. Like rookie year RB three, you said like that's at that point, you know. Yeah. And then sophomore year, and I mean the. The plus thing, he's never missed a game. He's played hurt plenty of times, yeah. but he's never missed a game. That's, yeah. like, I guess, that's the positive. All right. Well, let's wrap her up. And once again, tell me or tell us everywhere that we can find you. All right. Uh, thank you for having me. I do appreciate it. Um, right. Again, Scott Milne. You can find me at topshelffantasy.com, Twitter, Instagram at topshelffntsy, and anywhere you can get a podcast player, Spotify. Anything like that, uh, Top Shelf Fantasy. All right. Well, this concludes another edition of 2024 Dynasty Risers and Fallers on the Mad Science Lab podcast, brought to you by the Fantasy Football Universe on our new network, the Fantasy Football Advice Network. Thank you, Scott, for joining me, and thank you all for tuning in. Take care and check back tomorrow for our next edition of Risers and Fallers. Take care, everyone. Uh-huh.